Something I love in games is when the music dynamically responds to actions that happen in the game. One cool example of this is called horizontal resequencing, where two or more different musical tracks crossfade into each other based on some event in the game, whether that's a battle starting, moving to a new region, picking up a power-up, something like that. So I wanted to experiment with this idea and do it um, you know, myself. So I cooked up a prototype, I wrote one piece of music in three different styles, and integrated them into a game using Unity and Wise, and created a <clears throat> visually bare bones example, which is just a triangle gradient of colors. I'm not a visual artist and uh, had the music crossfade into each other, and I think it ended up really cool. So anyway, before I get into my process of how I did it, I'm just gonna shut up and show you the demo. Should have cut that off sooner, I realized, but just trying to find the midpoint is just really funny to me. I don't even know why I tried to do that, but anyway. So everything I'm about to say, this is just how I did things, and they can all be bypassed if you're clever or if you have an implementation different from my prototype. All right, so the first thing you're gonna need is some audio that can actually crossfade into each other. I went with proper loops, which is common in RPGs and all kinds of games. Uh, you could get around this by having a fade in, fade out. That also works, but. Uh, I went with proper loops. The most important thing in that is to have a zero crossing, which means the waveform is at exactly zero at the very beginning of the waveform and at the very end, and that the waveform is moving in the same direction if there's any sort of momentum to it. If when you loop, either in your DAW or you know in-game, you hear a click or pop, you'll know that you don't have a true zero crossing. The other thing, and probably the most important, is that the different tracks you're going to crossfade are the exact same length. If you have them repeating infinitely and they're not the exact same length, then they'll go out of sync and then you're, you'll be embarrassed. To have the music be smooth and seamless in the crossfade requires that it is characteristically similar, or at least that's the phrase that I'm using. The most straightforward variable to control is the BPM, and so when I recorded the guitar, I figured out I was playing it at around 124 BPM and I played it to a click track. So then when I worked on the other arrangements that are based on synths and samples, I had my DAW set to the same BPM as when I recorded the guitar. You could do something fancy where you have, for example, one track at 124 and the other track you're crossfading to at 186. And then during the crossfade, you get this crazy three against two polyrhythm. I don't know, could be cool. It'd be tricky to pull off, but maybe that would be awesome. I don't know. The other thing that I did was have harmonic consonants between my tracks. In my example, all three tracks have the exact same melody line and they have the exact same chords. So it was super you know, simple for them to transition and have it sort of be pretty invisible. But you could deviate from that too and have some really cool results. You could have one track that is in 
you know, a major key and it's just a certain chord progression. And then another where every single chord is just the parallel minors chords. Most of the notes of those chords will be shared. And so it'll feel seamless, but it'll just darken every time you transition. I don't know. That could be cool. Lots of things that you could explore that are very powerful. Phase issues can be a very scary phrase for, for some of us audio folks. And I think in horizontal resequencing, you're at a greater risk for there being phase cancellation issues. So if you share a stem or sample library between songs, and then you use a phase altering plugin like an EQ, which seems really innocent, you could have a problem. So for example, if you're doing something similar to the game Faster Than Light that has an explorer track and a battle track, and let's say they share a bass line, but in the battle track, you've got percussion and you wanted to make space for kick drums. So you applied an EQ to your bass to sort of cut a piece of it away to make room for the bass drum. But then during the crossfade, the bass completely disappears and that's because you've got phase cancellation. And for what it's worth, that could be super cool. The bass cutting out during the crossfade of, you know, the transition between an explore theme and a battle theme could be awesome. So trust your ear and, uh, and just, just go with what sounds good. For my implementation, I used Unity and Wise, but any game dev engine that plays with any audio middleware should be able to do this kind of thing, no problem. For my example, I put all the WAV files in one sound bank, and then I initiated them to play at the same moment, just at different attenuation levels, and so I knew they'd be perfectly in sync. For attenuation, I used an S-curve based on the distance from each tip of the triangle for each track. For music, I think especially in a 2D game, it doesn't make sense for it to be diegetic or spatial because the best sounding music is stereophonic and my examples are stereophonic. So for example, my guitar is actually my guitar recorded twice and I hard panned one left, hard pan one right. It makes the guitar sound rich and full. And if it's in mono, it just sort of loses some of that. So there's tons of ways that this could be expanded way further and do some really neat stuff. So you could trigger your transition to happen at the start of a measure or beat. One use case where this would be super useful is if, say, your game has a time warning, like in the uh, the old school Mario games, and you want to make that uh, dun -dun 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 sound and have it be in time with the music. And that super simple example would make your game feel really polished. And instead of crossfading, you could have additive layers where there's just a certain element of your track that's only present certain times of the game. Maybe you're near a fountain and there's a choir of angels that plays, um, you know, is added to the track only when you're near, near that fountain. I don't know. You could have random selection of individual measures based on some characteristic of the player. So I'm thinking of a use case like the game's black and white or fable where the player feels like they have agency over whether their character is good or evil. And you could fade between happier, upbeat, major key tracks or measures or whatever, and then darker, minor key, evil sounding tracks or measures or things like that. And this is starting to progress into generative music sort of by this point, but there's still so much that's never been done that I'm just so excited for, for what's possible, either for myself to make it or for someone else. And then I wanna play your game. Thank you so much for watching and listening. If you have any questions, comments, or thoughts, please feel free to leave them in the comments below and I will certainly respond. Adios.